What's going on everybody? C4 here. Welcome back. Technically it's episode 70 of Flashback. It's Pink Slips to Stop Pink Slips. If you missed last night's episode, basically we wanted to do a five-year rebuild with the Houston Oilers back where it all started. But we're just going to be pretty much doing a traditional rebuild at this point. So it's a flashback rebuild more so than flashback Pink Slips, but it's all kind of interwined. And it's our final video of Madden 20 on the channel. And what better way to finish it out with, I mean, outside of probably the Raiders franchise, when we were the Raiders, it was the most fun I had on the channel. Rebuilds were a little off this year. Um, kind of definitely, I, I, I viewed, I, I would say I took a step back in the rebuilds. Definitely didn't uh, take my channel uh, to the next level with our rebuilds. So this series was really, really fun. And I'm definitely, I've kind of talked about it in earlier videos, plan on in Madden 21, as soon as all the mods and that stuff become available, doing a, a flashback series. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. I don't know if I'm going to bring it back to flashback pink slips or something in between, but it will be utilized. So what we are doing here today is part two. We did the first two years of the five-year rebuild last night. And today we're going to be finishing it. And by God, we need a rebuild. We're still a very bad team. Only a 79 overall, 79 offense, 80 defense. But we have Lamar Jackson. And basically, if you missed it, the drafts, our, our first draft of the rebuild yielded us Christian McCaffrey at running back and Juju Smith-Schuster at wide receiver. Those were the big finds. Those were the big steals. In our draft in year two, we drafted Lamar Jackson in the first round. We made that decision to move on from Eli Manning. I, I just, nah, I don't want James Winston to be my quarterback. And then I just got a, the, the slap in the face of drafting Lamar Jackson and him only being a 67 overall. If you know me, I'm a Lamar Jackson homer. I'm a massive fan of Lamar Jackson. I would go out of my way to watch Louisville games when he was in college because he was that goddamn electrifying. And I know that it almost feels like you either like Lamar Jackson or you think he's a running back and you try to be edgy on the internet. I feel like there's no middle ground. I'm a big fan. And I've been a big fan for a while. Uh, we also were able to land his, you know, in real life, Baltimore Raven teammate, Orlando Brown Jr., Zeus Jr. at right tackle with a hidden dev. Uh, we got Phil and Lindsay in the draft to be the backup to Christian McCaffrey. Defensive side of the ball, you know, we've you know, been struggling at least to maintain pace, drafting studs, but we have good pieces in place. Yannick Ngakwe was a member of our very first draft of the rebuild. Uh, we landed Honey Badger in free agency. We've been able to really develop Jordan Hicks, take his game to the next level. We went up Dev Trait. Keanu Neal was a member of our very first draft class. He's looking like a very solid option at Strong Safety. Jaquiski Tart went up a Dev Trait last season. Uh, we brought back one of the old dogs on defense in Albert Hainsworth. He was a member of the very first Houston Oilers squad and at wide receiver we got Andre Johnson who was our very first first round pick in the Houston Oilers literally episode I don't even know if that would might, might have actually been episode one and here we are all the way at episode 70 and Andre Johnson is back so we have three years left to rebuild here today uh, it's probably gonna be rough for this first year unless Lamar Jackson hits the ground running I have no idea what to expect but optimism is high that before all is said and done We'll be able to close out Madden 20 with a Super Bowl title with the Houston Oilers. So the midway point of year three, and um, struggling. We are still struggling. One and seventy. We're always gonna be on the back end with Hawaii Warriors in our division. Like it's gonna, it's probably gonna take us uh, a bit, a bit to get to where we're happy. But that is not good. I'm starting to think maybe because we do have salary cap turned off. I'm not saying go buck wild, but maybe be a little bit more aggressive in free agency to close that skill gap and talent gap between us and the Marshals and the Warriors. Because right now, that is just, that's just not hot. So we got the 2019 draft is what we can import here. Let's get a look. Kyler Murray. I mean, we don't need a quarterback. <laughs> Absolutely don't need a quarterback. But we could go edge rusher. Someone like Nick Bosa would be huge. Devin White at linebacker would be nice. Josh Allen at edge rusher. Uh, TJ Hawkinson at tight end, Ed Oliver at D-line, Devin Bush is a beast, um, Brian Burns is a beast from these first rounders, uh, Josh Jacobs, I mean we don't need a running back, we'll scout him anyways, Montez Sweat, A-tier athlete, plenty of options in the first round, the Canadian, even though I don't think he really identifies as Canadian, but I know, we still know, Nikhil Harry, 
I'm looking at where we need to get. I mean, we just it's still, again, we're still at a position like a holding pattern of like we could pretty much get better at 90% of the positions on this team. So there's no such thing as a bad first round pick. And at the end of year three, I mean, that's our peak. I think we're three straight years of four wins. I could be wrong because a lot. Oh my God, the Panthers went undefeated 16 and 0. I, and we're also at a point now that there's just so many juggernauts that we've built. Like, where's. Let's see, we, we, so we were the Panthers, we made them good. Ooh, maybe not. Eagles are 8-7-1. They've regressed. Warriors only went 8-8. Eight eight. Hmm. But the team that we last were at, 16-0. My God, I think that's the first time I've seen that in Madden. The computer going 16-0. So, yeah. Um, well, Lamar's dev trait is this. Oh, my God. Oh my God, whoever made this draft class hates Lamar Jackson. I was hoping at least there'd be a superstar dev to kind of redeem himself from that rating. 71, and he's a star. So that means Lamar Jackson in these draft classes was a 66 star dev player. Uh, Philip Lindsay, UDFA, was superstar dev. We got Orlando Brown, superstar dev. Uh, I'm, I'm committed. We are going to make Lamar Jackson a god. One way or another, we're gonna put the we'll make the team around him so good that you just can't ignore his talents. I think that's what we're gonna have to do. But still, as you can see, plenty of spots that we need to get better. And four wins is not good enough. Looking at the stats here, Lamar Jackson, you know, was you know that's an above average rookie season. He's not scrambling, which isn't helping. I mean, you should be able to at least at minimum double those rushing numbers. Goody for McCaffrey over a thousand yards, nine touchdowns, twelve hundred and eleven from Devontae Adams. Juju was solid. Jason Witten still performing. Defensively, three players over 100 tackles. Harris, Keekley, and Honey Badger. Sacks are not good. I would love Nick Bosa in this draft. Interceptions are still actually not that great, given that our corners are probably the strength of our defense. Other our corners are our linebackers. But still a progress. We still got two more years of rebuild left. MVP went to Tim Tebow of the 16-0 Carolina Panthers. I, You know, at the other day, you kind of got to like seeing that. Lamar Jackson is the Offensive Rookie of the Year. And then for the rest of the individual awards, no Houston Oilers. So quick turnaround, but the plan will be now, as we gear up for year four, be a little more aggressive in free agency and see where that takes us. So for our, our aggressive free agency push, still I'm not going to like just cheese it and try to sign everyone. I want to make legit signings that would be big impact players. So first up, we get Dante Fowler at DN Scheme Fit. A lot of competitive bids in there from Pittsburgh and the Warriors, but we'll come in and would love to him to come in and be a partner for Yannick Ngakwe. And then I'm also looking at Shaq Thompson at outside linebacker. Big bid there from the Lions. Could be close. I won't be shocked if we miss out on both of them, but that'd be nice and a huge boost for our defense if we can land both of these young players who still have, you know, they haven't even hit their peak yet. All right, progress. Landing both Shaq Thompson and Dante Fowler. Huge gets for the defense. Makes it... Let's <laughs> stick a little less when we most likely miss out on Nick Bosa from the draft. So that's good. Good piece of business. I'm glad we're being a little more aggressive in free agency. For the draft, still have a very early pick. Picking at four. So let's just see how the 2019 draft starts out. First, the Dolphins are on the clock. And they select Quinn and Williams out of Alabama. Green Bay at pick two get Nick Bosa. Pick three, the Bengals get Devin White. Oh, phenomenal. Um, again, I mean, I guess we could technically bail... From the, you know, the Lamar Jackson and get Kyler Murray. But for me, um, I'm going to get, in my opinion, my favorite player from this draft class. It's very easy. We need a D-tackle badly. I'm going to get Ed Oliver out of Houston. He is 75, hidden dev, number five in true value, getting him at pick four. Welcome to the squad. It was really between him and TJ Hawkinson. And puss comes to shove. I will always be an Ed Oliver stan. We could have guessed who I was getting in the second round all along. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make my. Oh, why does he suck too? DK Metcalf, he has a hidden dev 64. Who I'm gonna have to like take it upon myself to just re-rate these draft classes if we're gonna do this all over again in Madden 21. This is disgusting. Is the amount of disrespect you're about to see in this draft, like this draft would almost be like a perfect redraft. Oh, the okay, so we got Ed Oliver as a beast. DK Metcalf almost is. Maybe worse than what we got with Lamar Jackson. Got Chauncey Gardner-Johnson in the third round. Actually, a great pick. 70 with a hidden dev. Outside of that, Darius Slayton, who's like the wide receiver one on the Giants right now. He's 62 normal. We got Minshew's 52. 
Um, and then we got Tony P, Parts Unknown, Tony Pollard, 55 overall. Just, just, my head hurts. My head hurts. Year four, and we're somehow just getting worse every year. It's like an inverse rebuild. Um, but here's where here's where we're at. Here is, uh, I think, uh, Devontae Adams is now an X-Factor. I don't think he was an X-Factor last year. That's probably a dev trade upgrade. It is. Very nice. So we got a superstar X-Factor there. Um... Not much else has changed. We have no more Jason Witten. He walked in free agency. I thought it was time to move on there. Um, defensively, I don't think there's any dev trace. I'm actually going to go with Ed Oliver over Albert Hainsworth. Get the young stud out there on the field. Same with Chauncey Garner Johnson over Jaquiski Tart. Dante Fowler comes in free agency. Is going to be a huge get for that D-line. Same as Shaq Thompson. Trying to just get a little bit of that Carolina Panther duel between him and Luke Keekley. To help carry this team here in year four, there's something more than four wins. We put a year four. I mean, at least we're at four wins right now. Four and four is better. We're second place in the division. There's a chance we could catch San Antonio. I do like seeing our team ahead of Hawaii. Makes me feel good. Final draft that we will be having is the 2020 draft that's just happened. So obviously, there's a lot of names on the table uh, at the quarterback spot, not at the quarterback spot. Knowing the strengths and weaknesses of our team. I mean, hey, it's a good year to need a tackle. I can tell you that. Um, Jerry Judy, good year to need wide receivers. Even though we're pretty good at wide receiver, But I definitely think we'll either be going, I'd hate to, I don't know. Probably tackle. We'll probably be grabbing a Becton, a Wills, a Andrew Thomas, Tristan Wirfs type pick. That's probably where we need to get better the quickest. But it's a good draft class. The end of year five wasn't able to pull it out. Eight, seven, and one is not bad. It's doubled our wins from any other previous year. So we're definitely trending in the right direction. Looking at our squad, our dev trade, where we're at. So one thing that's going to be definitely weird is if we get the opportunity to hop in here and play the playoffs next season, Lamar Jackson is not going to play like Lamar Jackson. He doesn't have escape artists, which is it's going to be tough. DK Metcalf came out star dev. Phenomenal. Very happy with that. Ed Oliver came out Superstar Dev. More happy with that. Wouldn't mind an X-Factor. But Superstar Dev is not that bad. So uh, let's see our stats here. Who did what? Lamar Jackson, 30 touchdowns. I will take that. Whoa, look at the, look at the accuracy. Only three turnovers. Protected the football very well. 1,200 yards, five touchdowns there for McCaffrey. Lamar is just not playing like Lamar. This is annoying. No 1,000-yard receiver. Austin Hooper, oddly enough, led the team with almost 800 yards. I mean, Lamar Jackson utilizing his tight ends makes sense. Devontae Adams, 700 yards, four tutties. We had nine for Andre Johnson, almost 706 for Juju. But again, this is just, the, the you know, maybe the downside of doing a flashback series is that while the players look like the players, they don't play like the players. They don't sim like the players. Like Lamar Jackson isn't simming like Lamar Jackson. Even Lamar Jackson right now in Madden would still get you four, five hundred rushing yards, five, six touchdowns every single year. Christian McCaffrey would have, you know, five, six hundred receiving yards. He's not playing like... A all-purpose back, which is a little annoying, but it is what it is. Defensively, Luke Keekley, tackle machine, 126 tackles, 12 TFLs, three picks, playing like Luke Keekley. Sacks are still not where we want them to be, but they're not they're not brutal. Uh, seven picks, Honey Badger. Yes, sir. 88 overall. Thank you very much. Yearly, we have the 31st offense in the NFL. The fact that we got eight wins, I'll take that. Yearly awards MVP went to Patrick Mahomes. Um... I don't know why I just backed out of that. We had no one make that list. Uh, in the AFC, hey, hey, Luke Keekley, Defensive Player of the Year. Honey Badger, one and two. Appreciate you. Um, Luke Keekley, Linebacker of the Year. Honey Badger, DB of the Year. Unfortunately, both those guys already have their X-Factor ability, so it's not like they're going to be going up a dev trade or anything like that. So, yeah, this is going to be a crazy offseason. We're gearing up for year five. Let's let it all hang out. Let's go crazy in free agency. Let's dominate the draft. Let's find a way to put it all together for year five and go with a dub here in Madden 20. So for our final free agency period, there's a little bit of upgrades, a little bit of nostalgia, everything sprinkled in. So first up, Jason Kelsey was a member of one of our former teams. Obviously, we need an upgrade at center. That'd be huge. Peyton Hillis, I don't really need a power back, even though I could definitely have that option. McCaffrey. My plan is to make him like our running back two and fullback. We got Ronnie Stanley. Might as well add another member of the Baltimore Ravens to pair with Lamar Jackson and Orlando Brown Jr. He'll be our right tackle. And then a little bit more nostalgia bringing back Dorel Rivas. I have no idea where he'd even fit 
in the cornerback depth chart, but he was still there. There's no bids on him, and he's probably the best corner we've had in the entirety of this rebuild. Everyone signed outside of Jason Kelsey, so I threw a couple more bids in on some veteran linemen that might be able to come and help us. Uh, Ryan Clady at tackle. I think I would slide him into guard. And then we got Richie Incognito to come in as our new starting center. So for the 2020 draft, we actually don't have a super high pick, but let's kind of just see how it all plays out. Number one overall pick is Chase Young going to the Chiefs. Okuda to the Giants. Pick three, Andrew Thomas to the Dolphins. Pick four, Derek Brown to the, to the Colts. Pick five, Joe Burrow. Joe Exotic. Detroit Lions. Pick six, Simmons goes to Baltimore. Pick seven, Wills goes to Dallas. Pick eight, Henderson goes to New England. Pick 9, Ruggs goes to Atlanta. Pick 10, Kinlock goes to the Redskins. Pick 11, to the Chargers, they get CeeDee Lamb. Pick 12, the Bengals get Terrell. Pick 13, Broncos get Werfs. Pick 14, oh, good guys are God. Jerry Judy stays within the division going to Hawaii. Pick 15, Arizona gets Chaison. Pick 16, Green Bay gets Kenneth Murray. Pick 17, Chicago gets Cesar Ruiz. And that sets up the draft board for your Oilers with, ugh. boy. Um, okay, so, hmm. I kind of need a tight end, and there's no tight ends. I, if I wanted de facto and just pick a lineman, we can get Becton. That's really our only option. Becton's really our only option on the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, that's still... You know, Patrick Queen at linebacker, we're good. We're happy with our linebacking core. Secondary, it's all the bubble guys. You know, we missed out on the Cuda and Henderson. Safety, we could get Grant Delpit, Xavier McKinney, but we're fine. So that's one of our strengths of our team. So we'll grab the athletic freak of nature, Makai Becton, in the first round. 74 normal, number 15 in true talent. Getting that at pick 18. Probably going to slide him into guard. So for our final draft, the 2020 draft. Happy with it? We got Becton, who will find a way. I think he'll probably have to play, uh, move to right guard. Let's just make it right now. We'll go with him. He should develop quicker than Braden Smith, who's our current starting guard. Uh, we got Albert O. Then I pretty much literally just filled out our depth chart. So we got Albert O at tight end. We got Lucas Nayang at tackle. James Lynch out of Baylor at DN. Kinley out of Georgia at guard. Brayvon Roy out of Baylor at D tackle. And I just threw a flyer there at a punter. All these guys are bench guys. None of them had dev traits. So there's the best pick of the bunch, Becton, who now will be trying his trade at right guard. Our team is definitely trending in the right direction here for year five. We're now an 83 overall. Lamar Jackson, still a work in progress, able to just kind of go a little buck wild of free agency, bringing in Peyton Hillis, Clady, Incognito, Ronnie Stanley on the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, we're still very good. Ed Oliver's taking his game to the next level. We brought in Darrell Rivas to be corner three. Shaq Thompson went up a dev trait from star to a superstar. Chauncey Gardner Johnson straight up now is a superstar X Factor. I don't know. I assume he just. Yeah. <laughs> Go to his second year. He's a freaking age. He's just a sim god. He's one of the few players. You're making the all time Madden 20 team. Chauncey Gardner Johnson, regardless of what position you have at safety or linebacker corner, he makes it, man. He is one of the best pound for pound players in Madden 20. Hopefully that can be enough because we were kind of close, but. Also, not super close to making the playoffs last year. It would be kind of lame if all for not here in the final episode of the final series of my final Madden 20 video, we don't make the playoffs. But I'm not fudging numbers. I'm not going to force wins. I take it as it comes. It's truly a crapshoot. At the midway point, we were 4-3. and three. I have no idea. I, I, my gut says we're not making the playoffs. Yes, we did! Yes, we did! 9-7! and seven. By some sort of miracle, we find a way to make the playoff. Nine and seven. Yes. Yes, sir. And we won the division. Just, I don't know what the tiebreaker was, but we had it. We had that tiebreaker. No dev traits we need to worry about because we had nothing. Look at the stats here. Lamar Jackson. 28 touchdowns, nine picks. I mean, again, you know, it's fine. He's never going to play. Like Peyton Hillis came in, did the job. McCaffrey, that's a great one-two punch. Receiving 10 touchdowns, Austin Hooper. Uh, not, no one else really had a dominant year. Luke Keekley tackle machine, 136 tackles, 4 sacks, 2 picks. Look at that. Shaq Thompson, 126, 12 TFLs, 2 interceptions, 9 sacks. Dante Fowler leading the team. No 7 picks from Honey Badger, but 
I'm not worried about it, man. It's all about just getting in the playoffs. Having a chance. RG, what? RG3, the current backup quarterback on Baltimore, won the MVP. Sure. Um, we had no one that won an award, but it's fine. It's team success. All about team success. As we get ready for this playoff run, we host the 10-6 and six Oakland Raiders. We're going to do this. We're going we're gonna to find a way to pull this one off and win a Super Bowl here in year five. So we'll pop a bear. We'll play the moments. Hop in when we can. I definitely want to get some gameplay here. So here's hoping, you know, this is a this is a gameplay that we come in when we're already up, kicking our feet up, just trying some weird things. And it's not looking great, though. In the first half, we have zero points, down seven. Oh, my God. All right, I'm coming in next time. We just need the greatest fourth quarter comeback in NFL history. No pressure whatsoever. We're starting on their 15, Lamar Jackson. Let's see. I mean, obviously, again, we don't have escape artists. I can't do the ridiculous thing that Lamar Jackson is known for doing. And if he had the trust ability, he wouldn't fumble it either. <sighs> Brutal. All right, now we can do this one, though. We can come back in. We can make amends. Even though we're down, let's let our X-Factors make play. Oh, how about a vert till it hurts Andre Johnson for old time's sake? Now, he is like 41 years old. I have no idea where his speed's at. Lamar cannot throw a deep ball. Is he actually a running back? Could I have capitalized on all the memes and just made Lamar a running back as soon as I drafted him and kept Jameis Winston, kept Eli Manning? I would love to complete a pass. First and foremost, I would simply love to complete a pass. Third and 10, four down territory. Austin Hooper, for whatever reason, has actually been like our best sim player. So maybe we can make a big play here. Yes, we can, because he was wide open. Thank God he didn't drop it. Let's get a touchdown before the two-minute warning. Hopefully the AI got a couple ebooks and can make that onside kick for us. We'll just chuck it down here. Peyton Hillis gets the first down up to the four-yard line. I mean, now it's just about having some self-respect, because, I mean, this game's blown out of the water. We did not deserve to win. we got DK Metcalf at the top of the screen. Instant sack. You literally couldn't control anything. Snapped the ball, got locked into a sack animation. Come on. We paid Richie Incognito top dollar after we whiffed on Jason Kelsey in free agency to help protect Lamar Jackson. Not to give up instant sacks in the biggest game of the season. Second to goal on the seven. Hey, there we go. Andre Johnson, one for the road. Maybe we'll have another chance to go downfield. Nope. Nope. Well, there you have it. That's, that's kind of how we. That's how we're gonna end it. Perfect way to. I'm so tired. I literally have been working for like 12 hours a day for the last two days. Oh boo hoo! You're a YouTuber. I get it. I know. No, but I'm just super tired. And I wish, under better circumstances, we could have ended the this this Madden 20 era on the YouTube channel, the Pink Slip series, flashback series. But I mean, I just you know what? I honestly, if I just to. Uh, Toss accountability off myself. These draft classes were garbage. Lamar Jackson sucked. Like, Lamar Jackson wasn't Lamar Jackson. DK wasn't DK. If these guys were, you know, getting redrafted and, and they were going to play like the guys that we expected them to be, maybe we would be a powerhouse and a juggernaut in year five. But here we were with, like, a different path, Lamar Jackson. Like, if he didn't wear shades on the sidelines that one time, he went down a different road and wore, like, I don't know. Just dabbed. Like, Lamar Jackson would refuse to stop dabbing. Instead of being, like, the king of swag right now in the NFL, Lamar Jackson just refused to stop dabbing. That's the Lamar Jackson we had. We have dabbing Lamar Jackson, when in reality we should have had Truz Lamar Jackson. But that is it, fellas. That is the final rebuild on the channel. That is the final Madden 20 video. I don't know what I'm allowed to say, but definitely want to keep an eye on your sub boxes tomorrow. Um... Yeah, Madden 20 season's over. Madden 21 season begins before you know it. Thanks for all the love and support. I appreciate it. And hopefully Madden 21 can be a banger, can be bigger and better than in every single way than what we were able to accomplish on the channel here in Madden 20. Thanks for watching. First time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace out. And thanks to everybody who put the work in here for this flashback pink slips series.